The city of Poway considering new rules that would allow law enforcement to remove homeless encampments from public land. Plus, newly released video that could help investigators in the case of a missing woman in Idlewild. Neighbors helping neighbors here in the backcountry to reduce the fire danger in their community. And it was the sword swallowing stunt that went horribly wrong. Marugan the mystic tells us how he lost his job and part of his love. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. In just about an hour, the Poway City Council will discuss an ordinance on homeless encampments. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Chiquetta. The ordinance would allow the city to remove encampments from the public right of way. CBS 8's Brian White is live at Poway City Hall tonight to explain that measure. Brian. Yes, Carlo and Marcella, the city council meeting will be getting underway here in about an hour at 7 o'clock. And on the agenda is this new ordinance pertaining to the removal of homeless encampments on public property. I reached out to city council members and the mayor on this, but no one chose to go on camera ahead of tonight's meeting. But the city manager told CBS 8 the idea behind this ordinance started over concern by local moms who were repeatedly seeing people occupying the area in RVs and other vehicles around their children's elementary school. This ordinance is simply a tool for our toolbox to give the city the ability to protect public spaces for safe use by all. Now, this ordinance would give law enforcement additional tools to remove encampments on public property, giving at least 24 hours notice unless there is an immediate threat to public health or safety, in which case the time frame could be less than that, and personal property removed would be stored for at least 90 days. Now, these regulations are undoubtedly a reaction to a similar ordinance under consideration by the city of San Diego. The first page of the staff report says as much, quote, the city of San Diego has recently stepped up efforts to abate public camping, which could cause homeless individuals to travel to Poway. I find it interesting that they're reacting and they say right in there that this is in reaction to Mayor Gloria's encampment ban that they fear is going to push people out of the city, which is going to happen. Michael McConnell has long been an advocate for homeless solutions. He thinks we could be seeing a domino effect. This is worrying other cities and it's going to pit cities against each other and homeless people are caught in the middle being pushed back and forth onto the freeways, off the freeways, into the canyons, out of the canyons, from one sidewalk to another. The Regional Task Force on Homelessness issued a statement today in opposition to these regulations, saying, quote, with the lack of shelter options across our region and safe places in Poway for people experiencing homelessness, many individuals experiencing homelessness have no choice but to stay on the streets. If an ordinance like this is to be implemented, where are those people who desperately need a safe place to stay but have no other option to go? Now, I looked up the point in time count conducted last year by the Regional Task Force on Homelessness. They counted more than 8,400 unhoused people across the county, with only 23 of them here in the city of Poway. That's right, less than two dozen people here in the city of Poway. That's a far cry from the city of San Diego, which they counted more than 4,800 people living on the streets. Those are interesting statistics, Brian, but as you mentioned in your story, leaders are afraid that the new potential ban in the city of San Diego is going to push people to Poway. If this ordinance does pass, do you know when it could go into effect in Poway? Well, tonight is the first reading, and city staff told me that it will be coming back for adoption on July 18th, and if they adopted at that meeting, enforcement would begin 30 days after that. All right, we'll keep tabs on this one. Thanks so much, Brian. At last check tonight, a man who was hit by a dump truck and trapped beneath it is still fighting for his life. It happened at about 4.30 this morning at the off-ramp from the 905 to Britannia Avenue in Otay Mesa. Firefighters say a man on a bicycle was hit by the dump truck and then got trapped underneath it for almost an hour. San Diego firefighters helped Chula Vista and Cal Fire crews with the rescue. The bicyclist was rushed to a trauma center with life-threatening injuries. We still don't know what led up to the accident. Today marks three years since Dia Abrams went missing from her ranch near Idlewild. She was never seen again. Now for the first time we are seeing video of the former La Jolla resident recorded just hours before she vanished. As CBS 8's David Gottfriedson reports, the video solidifies the timeline of the woman's mysterious disappearance. It could be Dia Abrams' last act of kindness, recorded by a neighbor's doorbell ring camera around 9 a.m. on June 6, 2020. 
five and a half hours before she went missing from her ranch near Idlewild. It's an actual video verification that she was alive Saturday morning. The neighbor gave the video to CBS 8 but did not want to be identified. It shows Dia delivering a box of cinnamon rolls to the front door of the neighbor's house and then walking back to her nearby Bonita Vista ranch property. My understanding is that her neighbor said that what she really felt like eating were cinnamon rolls and that she had had uh, cancer or was undergoing chemotherapy and so my mother baked her cinnamon rolls that morning. Clinton Abrams is Dia's son. He sat down with me at the family's home on Mount Soldad three years to the day after his mother went missing. I can't believe that it hasn't been solved. I can't believe that people haven't spoken up and come out with the truth because I know a lot of people actually know what happened. The timeline of Dia Abrams' disappearance is almost entirely based on statements made by her boyfriend, Keith Harper, who admitted in a deposition last year that he was the last person to see her alive at the ranch. The last I saw her was approximately 2.30 when I had lunch with her. Harper says he worked on the property all afternoon that day, and when he came back to the ranch house around 7.30 p.m., Dia was nowhere to be found. Her purse, cell phone, and Ford F-350 pickup truck still at the ranch. You never left the property at all? Never. Harper was at the ranch while neighbors searched all day for Dia on Sunday, June 7th. But he left Monday morning, driving his RV through Arizona and New Mexico before the Riverside Sheriff's Department showed up and searched the ranch for three days. I don't think that this was a one-man job. I think it's too complex. I think it was done too perfectly. I think Dia was kidnapped that Saturday, taken to another location, murdered, and disposed of somewhere in the relative local vicinity of, of her property. Harper denies any involvement in Dia's disappearance, and he continues to live on the ranch in Mountain Center. In fact, Dia changed her trust, naming Harper as co-trustee of her estate just two weeks before she went missing. In an email to CBS 8, Riverside Sheriff Chad Bianco wrote, Investigators are still actively pursuing leads in the case, including one in Arizona. Quote, we have served numerous search warrants, interviewed dozens of people in multiple states, and continue working with our law enforcement partners in Arizona. Dia Abrams' son is now calling for the FBI to get involved in the case, pointing out that leads in the case are now taking investigators across state lines. I can't imagine how infuriating it has to be for Dia's son to uh, sit here and, and see the man she believes uh, killed his mother free. Uh, you've reported about a $300,000 reward being offered to help find Dia Abrams. What's the status of that reward? Well, that gets a bit complicated. There was a court battle over Dia Abrams' estate. There was a settlement, and now a court-appointed trustee is trying to raise that reward money. We'll let you know when it officially gets posted. David, you'd follow this very closely. A very interesting update. David Garfinson reporting for us. Thanks, David. Dozens of rats found living in squalor inside of a van are in the care of the San Diego Humane Society tonight. The Humane Society tells us about 90 rats were found inside the van. Only 78 survived. The rats were found after police responded to a call about the van in the parking lot of an Escondido hotel. It took several days to catch all the rodents. They were found hiding in the seats, in the dashboard, anywhere you could imagine in the lining of the roof of the van. So. Um, you can just imagine that they have been hiding for a long time. We're told the owner of the van fell on hard times and was not able to care for the rats any longer. She's not expected to face any charges because she surrendered the animals oh. and is cooperating with investigators. The rats are also pushing the already crowded Humane Society over capacity. Once they are vaccinated and medically released, they will be put up for adoption. A major milestone in La Jolla Shores where overhead utility poles are now a thing of the past. San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria and Councilmember Joe LaCava were there today as the final pole was removed. Uh, two miles of utility lines were moved underground as part of this project, serving 81 homes. On top of that, five new streetlights were installed and two dozen trees were planted. 
The city of San Diego is moving about 15 miles of overhead utility lines underground every year. Still ahead tonight, the field of Republican candidates running for president gets more crowded. Plus, are we in the clear when it comes to a recession? What experts are saying tonight. This is a live image from our Mount Soledad camp. So there are some areas that are seeing some sunshine this afternoon, and we could see a little bit more by Thursday before the cloud cover rolls in strong for the weekend. All those details are coming up. And up next, a story we're continuing to follow. Florida officials now say they are responsible for having migrants flown here to California.